Thanks, Brendan. I hope I can live up to that. Um, I did, Brendan was reminding me before um, that we actually had um, Hans Joseph uh, appearing as a uh, as a guest of Beyond Zero Emissions about four years ago, and we advertised him as you know the father of renewable energy, um, you know appearing at Melbourne University. So people were a bit surprised when they came along and saw him on a, a dodgy Skype um, connection. Um, but but I was kind of um, I was kind of glad the connection was a bit dodgy because we only had about 15 people in the audience so Hans couldn't see that he'd woken up at you know <laughs> some ungodly hour to speak to about 15 people <laughs> what, um, and that this was the early days of our organisation but what the, the reason I bring it up is that um, you know Hans Joseph Fell has actually uh, and, the, and his friends who he was talking about before have actually driven more renewable energy um, you know real large-scale industrial renewable energy than probably anyone in the world, although the Chinese are giving them a bit of a run for their money at the moment. But, um, you know, it's an extraordinary achievement, a real giant in the field. So it was incredibly generous of him to, um, to speak to a small climate group that we started a few years ago. Uh, in Germany, uh, Germans actually pay a little bit more for their electricity at the moment than Australians. It's about 31 cents a kilowatt hour. In Australia, it's about... Um, it's about 21 cents. But the Australian Energy Market Commission has uh, projected that we'll have a 37% rise in electricity prices by 2013-2014. Um, so that means that Australian electricity prices will be about 29 cents a kilowatt hour on average, and while German electricity prices will go up a, a couple of percent and probably be at about 32 cents a kilowatt hour. So very close in electricity prices. The difference between um, electricity bills is, though, that German households use about half as much electricity as Australian households. So the bottom line is that uh, next year, <coughs> or the year after, German electricity bills will be to consumers will be about half what we're paying in Australia. Um, so uh, you know it'll, it'll be like an average of $88 a month in Germany, about $176 a month in Australia. Now. The rise in Australia, the 37% rise, um, only less than 5% of that is actually attributable to the various renewable energy schemes around Australia. Okay, so a lot of it's actually you know, new gas-fired generation, etc. The gulf is actually going to widen because while our electricity prices are going to, while our electricity consum consumption is projected to continue increasing rapidly, the Germans are only going to have a, a, a continuing on with their, with their energy efficiency target, having a 20% energy efficiency target by 2020. So low electricity bills are not the only achievement of um, th this incredibly efficient German electricity system. They've restructured the economy to make it competitive in a carbon constrained world. And, and the renewable energy sources tax that Hans was talking about has actually eliminated 70 million tonnes of CO2 a year within their borders, okay, not offset overseas and, um, and uh, driven by, um, by German jobs. Uh, they're avoiding reliance on, uh, reducing their reliance on Russian gas, which is a big issue because of the fluctuating gas prices. Now, it's interesting, the, uh, the German gas market, the average import price from gas is generally lower than the J Japanese LNG import price. Now when Australia starts export when Australia starts exporting their our, our LNG in huge amounts in um, within the next couple of years, uh, we're going to start getting linked to the Asian gas prices. So there's even more of an imperative well, you know, there, there's a big imperative for us to stop um, to not be reliant for our domestic power supply on gas, which will be linked to global price parity. They've lowered the cost of renewables in Germany, and it's estimated that by the time they reach about 40 gigawatts of solar PV, solar PV will be cost negative over a seven year um, payback period. At the moment, they've got about 25, um, 25 gigawatts of solar thermal, they added seven and a half last year. So that could only be, that could be a few years away. Uh, but a really important thing is they're actually making renewable energy affordable to other countries, particularly developing countries. Um, access to electricity is a, a huge um, global issue at, for places like Bangladesh. And in Bangladesh, the Grameen Bank um, 
has uh, a project for half a, to connect half a million Bangladeshis to um, an electricity supply. Now that is that could never have happened if the Germans hadn't paid through their electricity consumers and the feeding tariff to drive down um, the price of solar PV. So that is in effect one of the most massive foreign aid achievements in history. Uh, they've also built a really dynamic um, and adaptive economy. The sol half the solar PV panels in Germany are still provided by German companies and just the, in the same way that the German car manufacturing industry has stayed strong in the face of, um, of uh, Asian competition, um, the solar panel industry is expected to as well. And renewable energy supplies about 370,000 jobs in Germany. So why has this all happened? Well, um, it's because Germany is serious about actually uh, transitioning their economy away from a 19th century fossil fuel economy to a 20th century clean tech economy. And a big part of that has been Hans Joseph Fell and um, the uh, recently deceased Dr. Hermann Scheer um, who, uh, and, and their associates who got the feed-in tariff bill in. Uh, Germany had a 20% renewable energy target by 2020. They surpassed that, um, they've already surpassed that, so they've, they've raised it to a, to a 30%. They've got the lowest unemployment um, since reunification. Uh, they're, um, and they're, they're going on with those further energy efficiency targets. Uh, they have a 100% renewable energy target by 2050. But since they're already um, you know, beating their targets, it's conceivable they could reach the German Green Policies target of 100% renewable by 2030. That, that's, uh, that's quite a possible outcome. Um, now, but does it, can, can these renewables supply electricity reliably? Well, over the last few, um, over, over this cold snap, this recent cold snap, over the last month, every hour of the last month, Germany has exported electricity to France to prop up the nuclear power plants that aren't able to supply electricity um, du um, properly during that time. So they're actually propping up the, the, um, the French nuclear system. With solar and wind, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. um, absolutely. And, and, and also the Spanish are as well. The Spanish are, are sending uh, renewable electricity, solar and wind to to uh, France as well. Just in conclusion, I'd, I'd just like to say that, um, you know, uh, as, as Brendan said, in December last year, um, the Germans added three, three megawatts of uh, solar PV to the grid, which is, a, which, sorry, three gigawatts to the grid, grid, which is about twice Australia's installed capacity of solar PV. So that's what it looks like when you're serious about um, getting renewable energy online. Now, that is not going to happen without a feed-in tariff. A carbon price, um, a carbon price alone will not deliver that, and I don't think anybody um, se seriously thinks that it will. A feed-in tariff is off the table politically in Australia at the moment due to intense lobbying by the gas industry and the and the three big players in the in the energy oligopoly. They they've lobbied intensely against it. It's because they don't like feed-in tariffs because they because they don't get an off-take agreement for electricity supply. Okay, it's bad for their business model. And unless we can get it back on the table and win this fight, uh, we are never going to go down the path Germany has and our electricity bills to consumers are going to go up and, um, and along with our uh, um, emissions, etc. And we'll never actually deal properly with this problem. So, um, yeah, and, and renewable energy will... and. The, a, a, small, a, a small levy across a lot of electricity consumers gets a lot of renewable energy capacity built without having a big impact on the rest of the economy. So I think it's really important that we actually, um, that we actually focus on getting a feed-in tariff back on the table in Australia. Thank you very much.